Hey, what's up guys? Fish Tank Mike here. Today we're talking about how to prevent mosquitoes in your outdoor pond. Every single time that I make one of these things, I always get that comment. What about mosquitoes? And so while I do have a method for cultivating mosquito larvae for fish food, we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about how to keep those mosquitoes from coming about and ruining your day. Because if there's one insect that I think we all hate, it's mosquitoes. Depending on where you live, mosquitoes can be a big issue. Luckily where I live, there isn't a lot of mosquito-borne illness, but that doesn't mean that it still isn't out there. And I realize a lot of you guys might live in parts of the US or the world for that matter, where it is a huge issue. So let's talk about ways that you can prevent them from coming about. The first thing that you can do, and I think this is probably the easiest solution, is to just have fish in your pond that are going to eat the larvae. And I mean, there are so many different types of fish that will eat mosquito larvae from goldfish to minnows to, I mean, pretty much any fish that's bigger than a mosquito larvae is probably going to munch on them. So that's the first tip. Just have some fish in your pond. Now, if you have a really small one or, you know, whatever you're doing, maybe you don't want to have fish in it. It's just supposed to be like a little water plant garden. I totally get that. And right now, that's exactly what this thing is. We don't have any fish in it. So a solution, if you don't have any fish in your pond, is to create some water surface agitation. The mosquitoes that lay the eggs don't like to rest on water that is uh, moving around, and so they're not gonna be depositing the eggs, and thus you won't get larvae and more mosquitoes. If you watch the setup of this pond, you know that we have like a little 200 liter per hour solar pump that drives this thing, and it's perfect. And just to show you what kind of water movement I'm talking about, I have a little extra pump here to demonstrate what you can do. So you don't need a ton of flow, you don't need things to be blown around, just enough to where you can't imagine a bug landing on it, if that makes sense. I don't think this method is 100% foolproof. If you have areas where there is still water, a mosquito might be able to land there and do its job. So just keep that in mind. I haven't had any problems with this thing so far and it's been set up for like two months now. But what if your pond is a little too big to where you can't create a lot of water movement, right? You're always gonna have little pockets where it's still. What can you do? So luckily there's a product that is safe for fish and plants and all life that might be in your pond and that is these things right here that I got on Amazon. These are mosquito dunks. Ingredients on here, it looks like it's actually um, a type of bacteria that does something to the larvae, prevents them from hatching. This stuff works really well. I actually haven't used it in a long time, but when I, at my old house, when I used to have the plant ponds in the kiddie pools, I used to use these, because that was a scenario where the water was still, there was no pump, there was no fish, just plants. These came in really handy. On the back here, it shows, you know, how many discs you need per uh, square footage of water. Uh, I just took this and broke a little chunk off and put it into my pond, not really dosing it all too scientifically, right? Um, but it did the job, it worked really well. So keep these in mind, link for these in the description, of course. And yeah, those are my three tips or three choices uh, that you can pick to prevent mosquitoes in your outdoor mini pond. I did a water change a little bit earlier on this thing, guys, and hopefully, I mean, we're just always gonna be battling the reflections, but you can see the dwarf sag in there and the detritus that's hanging out around them. I wasn't able to get all of it, but one thing I did wanna show you, or at least try to, was the um, plants, the rotala that we put in the back here. And the experiment was to see if we could keep this plant red in this pond. I haven't really ever been able to do it. Um, and unfortunately, it's starting to turn green again, so the positioning of our pond, it's not getting enough light, uh, at least not an intense enough light to keep it red, so uh, that's okay. I just wanted to see if we could do it. Um, other than that, you know, we're getting some nice immersed growth from some of the rotalas that we planted in the pots, and the bunny rabbit has been eating this stuff, as well as the the water celery over here in this pond that we're going to be redoing here pretty soon. But yeah, we have some more stuff we're going to be doing this weekend to the pond. I'm going to actually take out the bricks and lower all the plants down because I think that I think that'll just look a lot better. Um, you know, similar to the way this one looks, minus the fact that it's been eaten by the bunny, um, but you know, coming out of the water a little bit more. So that'll be next up among some other things that we're going to be doing to this thing. And yeah, that's pretty much the pond, guys. Let's breeze by those really quick. I just did a members video for that, so we can't share that quite yet, guys. Getting close. Let's go check out the actual big pond, though. 
So yeah, shocker, haven't gotten in here to do the work that we need to do yet, guys. I love it how this plant is doing. It's not gonna live here for forever. Um, but as you can see, totally overgrown by the water hyacinth and the water lettuce and the sylvinia that's down in here. And uh, you know, the fish, I mean, the, the whole pond, you can't even really see it, right? This part of what I like about down here is that it's so overgrown, but we need to get in here and clean it out a little bit. I'm worried about the baby tears over here. It's just totally taken over. And so we'll see what we can do. Um, it might get a little interesting. What's this stuff called? Eumonophoria angustifolium. That's not how you say that. But this stuff is... I have a special project in mind for that. We got two pots of it. And then, of course, we have some more of the variegated... V -v 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 variegated water celery. Awesome plant, but kind of invasive you got to be careful with it but yeah I mean that's pretty much the update guys I just wanted to show you the space and how it's just totally taken over uh, so far in this season but we still have a lot of the summer left we're kind of just really getting started so I promise the next time you see this area it'll be totally renovated and it you'll actually be able to see a pond we'll get some underwater uh, pond footage as well I know you guys really like that so anyway guys Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're new, check out the Pawn Season 3 playlist as well as the Pawn Season 2 playlist to see how we you know, built this and some of the other things that we did last year. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.